Shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome to this week's Sabbath service. We're going to start off by reading a scripture, and that scripture is 1 Nephi 3, 63 through 64 RAV, which is the RLDS, or Community of Christ, edition of the Book of Mormon, 11, 21b through 22 OPV, which is the Salt Lake City Church of the Brighamite version of the Book of Mormon. Knowest thou the meaning of the tree which thy father saw? And I answered him, saying, Yea, it is the love of God, which sheddeth itself abroad in the hearts of the children of men, wherefore it is the most desirable above all things. By way of announcements, I want to remind you that we do have the Priesthood 101 class at this point. It's too late to sign up, but if you'd like to sit in, it is Tuesday, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. You can find all these, by the way, on our calendar. Uh, calendar.cjccf.org or just go to the website cjccf.org and click on calendar. Um, every Thursday we have a meeting where we kind of go over a little bit of business, probably maybe a five to 15 minutes. And after that, it's really just a conversation. So if you'd like to hang out in Fellowship of Saints, please come. That's 830. Again, it's on the calendar. And the first Saturday at noon every month, we have our, we are calling it a temple committee meeting, but it really it's more the organization of the church side of things meeting where we go over uh, business. It's really a, a business meeting. But if you would like to attend and observe, you're welcome. We, we are a transparent organization. And if you would like to be a part of that portion of the movement and be a part of that committee, then please come. Let us know. Through this, we are we are moving forward in faith. As far as prayer requests, we really haven't gotten any. It's kind of funny. I put up something new on the website so that people could go and give prayer requests instead of just emailing or messaging or calling me. And uh, it's like people just kind of stopped reaching out. So I kind of feel bad. I don't know if it's because I'm not being personal enough, that they think I'm being impersonal or, or what the deal is. It's just as we're growing, Eventually, you know, we, we do need to move away from doing things the way that we currently are. And so we've got to start that transition. So please don't think I don't want to hear from you. If you if you want to reach out to me personally or Alan or anybody else, you're welcome to. Uh, the whole point of that form is really for convenience. Um, it's available at the church website dot org. It's at the bottom of the home page, and there's also a link at the top, so you can go and, and fill that out. Um, we do have a brother that had a death in his family, so let's please pray for him. And we have another family where they're having some family problems. I'll say it like that. Let's keep them in, in our prayers. The sister who is who I talked about previously about getting a new job. She should be starting that new job um, next week. And so let's say a, a special prayer for her, thanking the Lord that she's able to obtain this job and that everything will go well for her. Um, beyond that, and then, and then there's the sister who is having the issues with uh, the courts and the finances because of the church that she belongs to. And some things happen with some people in that. Let's keep her in our prayers. Beyond this, let's make sure to pray for the sick and the afflicted. Let's pray for those that are struggling in any way. And there is one last announcement I forgot to make during the announcements portion, and that is we are going to be changing things starting in March. And I'm not going to do a full announcement on that right now. Um, I'll probably do that announcement either next week or as we go into March. I'll probably make a special video on that. So things, changes are coming. And so I'm going to say that both as an announcement and also as a prayer request. We do need your prayers that, you know, I woke up this morning. I, I felt inspired by the Lord. I, I said some prayers. I received the revelation. And so the Lord has basically told us how to move forward with what we're doing. And so we need your prayers and your help to ensure that this next transition moves smoothly. I'll, I'll say it like that. So at this time, if you would like to pause the video, say a 
opening prayer, sing a hymn. We will be here when you get back. We're now going to move into the unity portion of our service. I'm going to read in Hebrew, Deuteronomy 6.4, and then I'm going to read in English my translation of it, and then there's going to be a, a break in the video where you will have the opportunity to read that back so that we can, can truly be one in the Lord by saying this prayer, reading the scripture together. Shema Yisrael, Yiva Elehenu, Yiva Echad, Hero Israel, Yiva is our Elohim. Yiva is unity. For this week's message, it's going to be, we're going to do something a little bit different. Originally, we had a volunteer that was going to be sharing a message, and things didn't work out. Some things came up. He's not able to do that. And when I woke up this morning realizing I'm going to have to come up with something here, the Lord already placed a scripture in my heart. It's the one that I read at the beginning of the service. And I thought, you know, what is it that the Lord wants me to talk about with this? And, you know, being so close to Valentine's Day, I had a lot of stuff in my head that was about love, loving your spouse, loving your neighbor, loving your family, you know, those sorts of things. But that's not what the Lord placed upon my heart. And that's where this is going to be a little bit different. What I felt impressed by the Spirit to do is actually to go and read an article that I wrote that was originally, I originally wrote and posted on May 12th of 2018. It's called The Divine Feminine. If you're ever in need of edification on the website, cjccf.org, one of the links at the top of the menu is edification. And that breaks down into four topics. And those are missionary, scripture study, Mormon Kabbalah, which would be priesthood, and history. And this is basically our blog. And I will tell you that one of the things that we do is, you know, rather than rewriting the you know, same topics of articles over and over again, I may feel impressed to go in and tweak an article or just move it forward to a recent date, you know, to, to that particular week, because it's what I feel the Lord has wants us to say in in that time period. There are a lot of articles there. There's probably hundreds of articles there. Uh, so, you know, if you're ever in need of edification, I basically just want to put a plug here for the blog. If you like to read, there's lots of stuff. A lot of it is written by me, but it isn't all written by me. It's written by people who were or are a part of the fellowship now. It's even written, there are things sent to us by people who are friends of the fellowship not really a part of the movement that we're doing here. But this article is titled The Divine Feminine, and it starts off with a scripture from 1 Nephi 3.46 REV 11.8 OPV. And it came to pass that the Spirit said unto me to look. And I looked and beheld a tree, and it was like unto the tree which my father had seen. And the beauty thereof was far beyond, yea, exceeding of all beauty, and the whiteness thereof did exceed the whiteness of the driven snow. So this obviously ties in to the scripture I read at the beginning here. And rather than talking about romantic love, I feel impressed by the Spirit to talk to you today about our Heavenly Mother. That's what I call her. That's what I was raised to call her. And my grandmother, who really hated the Latter-day Saint movement, uh, she was definitely anti-Mormon. She taught me, of, you know, as a Protestant, of her impressions of who or what Heavenly Mother was. And uh, I remember she, I'm going to share this real quick. I remember she had a conversation with me one time where she was trying to show that, that Protestantism, the churches she went to, had much more to offer than the Latter-day Saint movement. And she went into detail about some stuff about this Heavenly Mother. And she said, what do you think about that? I'm like, oh, everything you said is absolutely true. I mean, we definitely believe in Heavenly Mother, the church that, that I belong to. So, yeah, that's something that, that your church and my church has in common. And she's like, <laughs> she's very disappointed. Uh, I love my grandmother very much. She she passed away several years ago. Um, but I, I do miss talking to her about, about religion and these topics. So the article starts off, and I'm not just going to read it to you. I'm just going to kind of go over it. If you'd like to read it, you're, you're welcome to do so. You can 
you do have to be the way the website's set up is um, basically to not overwhelm the database. We have a bunch of subdomains set up, so you do have to go to the ecumenical. I'm sorry, to edification.cjccf.org on the website in order to search for these. I have not set anything up yet to where you can search the whole website, but uh, the the broad range of websites, I should say, but you are welcome to go here and search for the Divine Feminine or Heavenly Mother, and you'll find a number of articles on the topic. But this one starts off, you know, ecumenical movement here, talking about the reality that within our movement, there are a number of different ideas and theologies regarding the nature of God. And as a fellowship, we do accept all of them, because as finite beings, there's no reason why an infinite God cannot fit into these different little pegs we've created. And yet there's probably, or there obviously is a greater board that's beyond our comprehension to where all of these little ideas, these theologies that we create as human beings, as finite beings, expands into to where we're, we're all in some way or another correct. So I do want to preface this by saying that as individuals, even, even if you belong and you're a lifelong member, you know, hardcore into whatever church you belong to, like, like I used to be for the Salt Lake City Church, every single person in there is going to have their own theologies that differ from the main group and from whatever is being taught at any given time. Because we're all finite beings, we all have our own opinions. That's why I believe that religion is personal. We can go to different churches. But we all have our own individual religions. We all go to the same church, I should say. But we'll still all have our own individual religions. One thing that we have in common as Latter-day Saints, a lot of us believe in this concept of a female aspect of deity. And I've talked about it in the Mormon Kabbalah podcast. The reality that Elohim means Elo, goddess, singular. And then M, I am, is masculine, plural, which seems to imply a female goddess with one singular female goddess with multiple, however many, you know, two or more, I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing two or three um, male gods there together being the, the, the one true God, if you will. And, and that's just my explanation of that. Now, Many Trinitarians within our movement and outside of our movement would say that God is genderless. And, and I will say that there are apostles, even that were you know, at one point with the fellowship, who believed that God was genderless. Uh, I personally don't believe that. But again, it, it, they both can be true. God can be both gendered and genderless at the same time because infinite perspective, not finite perspective. So whether you believe in this idea of all of them being the same God that separate out to do different actions or several gods that unite together in, under one purpose, the reality is that God cannot just be male because the male perspective is not some dominant, or as it shouldn't be, overreaching thing over all things. You have to have male and female together in order to accomplish anything. And so, therefore, I'm going to call it the Godhead, or you can say the Trinity, however you want to say it. It's got to have that the different aspects of us. And if you look at the Kabbalistic Tree of Life, it's interesting because on the right, the male side, you have God the Father and you have the Holy, the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. Um, or both. They, they might be two separate things. And, it's something we're still discussing and figuring out as a people. On the female side, you have the mother and the son, which is interesting because now you have, you know, male father, female mother, but then female son. And so you, you're getting this tie in of all of these different perspectives here that we see in our reality as people. We have people that are genetically born as men, but identify their soul, their spirit, as feminine. And Jesus Christ, being the advocate of the Father, has to be able to identify with us in, in all of our different facets. Now, I'm getting a bit off topic here, but 
I tell you that because I want you to understand that God does love you and does understand you wherever you are. Don't ever think that you are something incomprehensible to God because the way the Kabbalistic tree of life is set up in Mormon Kabbalah, it's very clear to me that every aspect of the human reality is reflected in God. And so what that is saying is not that God is modeled after us, but that we are modeled after the God that we worship. So whatever it is you identify as, and however it is you identify in that way, in the Kabbalistic tree of life, you are there because you came from God. And so when we talk about this, this white tree, now the white tree, we, when we get into this in a minute here, we know represents Heavenly Mother. And the fruits upon the tree represent the love of God, the mercy of God, Jesus Christ. We can partake of that tree because we are a part of that tree too. So please don't forget that. You are sacred and you are special. Um, skipping down to Heavenly Mother, it says, regardless of one or multiple deity, in order to understand Hakma, we must see our Heavenly Mother as a goddess in her own right. So whether you want to see her as her own individual being or as part of a you know, Trinitarian concept, she still has to exist in her own way. And I do want to read, if you have a copy, right here. if you have a copy of um, Doctrine to Theologies of the Church of Jesus Christ, in the back, there's a, um, it's called um, Excerpt from the Journal of Abram H. Cannon. And that's in the article here. It says, One day the Prophet Joseph asked W.D. Cauldron and Sidney Rigdon uh, um, to accompany him in the woods to pray. When they had reached a secluded spot, Joseph laid on his back and stretched out his arms. He told the brethren to lie on each arm and shut their eyes. After they had prayed, he told them to open their eyes. They did so and saw a brilliant light surrounding a pedestal that seemed to rest upon the earth. They closed their eyes and prayed again. Then they saw, upon opening them, the Father seated upon a throne. And they prayed again and looked, saw, and looking. They prayed again, and on looking, they saw the mother also. And after praying and looking the fourth time, they saw the Savior added to the group. So here we have Father, Mother, Son, and how they see it? Because they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So for those that are new to this concept, and this is from the article, there's some questions here. How, do we, how can we know this is true? Well, we can know it's true by praying on the revelation that Joseph Smith received here. We can know it's true by reading the scriptures and finding all the different things where it's talking about Heavenly Mother and praying on them to know it's true. We can know it's true because as people who have read the Book of Mormon have a testimony of Jesus Christ because of the powerful witness of the Holy Spirit that makes us prophets and prophetesses, we have the ability to go to God seeking revelation so that we can be told that these things are true. What do we do with this knowledge? That's a good question. I believe that this point in time in the restoration of all things is the time of the restoration of Heavenly Mother. Back in 2018, the Lord set me on a quest. And I talked to a number of different people who have witnessed and talked to Heavenly Mother. Some of their testimonies are actually here. They're in Doctrines of the Saints. There was one that was on, on the, the blog, but she asked me to take it down because she didn't want to get in trouble with her church. But we did still have permission to keep it in the um, doctrines, or, I'm sorry, Epistles of the Saints. It's in Epistles of the Saints. So there are many witnesses up to the reality of a mother in heaven. Do Why don't we worship her as we do God the Father? Well, I want to be very clear that we don't. We are the Church of Jesus Christ, not the Church of God the Father, not the Church of God the Mother. We're the Church of Jesus Christ. We do all things through Jesus Christ. So when we pray, we've been taught to pray to the Father, but do you really think the Mother isn't listening? And if you pray to the Mother, do you really think the Father isn't listening? 
If you feel inclined to pray to Heavenly Mother, I want to ask you to pray to the Father first and ask for revelation on this and understand for yourself how you're doing it. Because I genuinely don't believe that you can only talk to the Father or the Mother. I believe that when we pray, they've got us on speaker, so to speak. Now, there is a question someone asked once, well, if Jesus is the Father of our salvation, and so therefore as Christians, he's the Father, when we pray to the Father, are we actually praying to him? And I say maybe. For me personally, I say it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because then why are we ending the prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, the advocate of the Father? I do believe that we are praying to our, our heavenly parents when we pray. The reason why I say you should pray and ask for revelation, personal revelation on prayer, is because at this time we don't have any specifics other than the Lord's Prayer where he tells us to pray to the Father. There are those who have taken the Greek version of the Lord's Prayer, translated it into Aramaic, and then translated it into English, changing it to say, you, know, you pray to the parents instead of you pray to the Father. And, you know, I, I say that's fine. I, I, I don't know how accurate or inaccurate that is, but I don't, I don't think it's too inaccurate because, I, like I said, we're on speaker when we pray to the Father. The Mother is listening. So if you pray to the mother, I want to make sure you understand that you are praying to the father also. The father is listening. And I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to receive your own testimony, your own witness of this. Uh, and the last question here is, is she doctrinal or merely a logical conjecture based on hints in the scripture? Um, if there's hints in the scripture, I would have to ask, why wouldn't she be doctrinal? We know that after the fall of Babylon, the scribes had to really do a lot of scrubbing to hide the fact that they, that the Israelites, the Judea, the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that they were not monotheistic. The, the idea of monotheism in the Hebrew language does not really begin in the Bible until after the fall of Judea. So it's not a hint. It's an echo. It's a reflection. It's a part that they couldn't or wouldn't or didn't hide. And if you read the Book of Mormon, Heavenly Mother is mentioned the same way. Reading First Nephi, I get the impression that the writer, Nephi, just assumed that we were going to know who Heavenly Mother was in the way that he wrote things out. He took a lot of liberties because he assumed that we would have the same cultural understanding that he did, and we did not. But I think that at the same time, that's a good thing because in 1830, they weren't ready for this idea of a Heavenly Mother yet. It wasn't until 1835 that they moved away from Trinitarianism as, as the Church of Latter-day Saints, as it was called at that, at that time. So we need to understand that as human beings, it's hard for us to grasp a hold of new truths when we have old truths ingrained within us. That doesn't make the new truth false. It doesn't make the it, it doesn't make the new truth unnecessary or irrelevant. It just means that we're now ready for the new truth. And so it's just time to accept it. Now, there are some scriptures that this mentions. One of them is Jeremiah 7, uh, 7, 18. The children gather wood, the fathers kindle fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes for the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings to other gods that they may provoke me to anger. Now, I think the problem here with worshiping Heavenly Mother is the part where it says, unto other gods. I think the idea of recognizing Heavenly Mother and praying Heavenly Mother is fine, but they were actually like grabbing her and removing her from Yavah, from Jehovah, from the great I Am, and putting her with these other foreign deities. That is obviously a problem. She's supposed to stay over here where she, where she actually is. 
I wasn't going to say where she belongs, but it's not where she belongs. It, it is where she belongs, but it's where she, in reality, she is. Imagine someone saying, okay, I'm going to call you at your worst enemy's house. And they're going to keep calling and calling and calling. Well, you're never going to be there, right? If you're over there gathering wood and kindling a fire and kneading dough and making cakes for the queen of heaven to pour out drink offerings into other gods, Heavenly Mother's not going to be there with you. So at that point, Yava is like, hey, we're over here, guys. You're committing spiritual adultery. Now, I do want to point out, and I mentioned this in the article, that Queen of Heaven is a term used by either Joseph Smith Jr. or W.F. Phelps, whoever, um, we're not sure who wrote the lyrics, um, but here's our Father in Heaven and Mother the Queen, that's in History of the Church for the Brighamites, uh, Volume 5, page 254. Um, like I said, there's some confusion as to who wrote that poem. But the reality is that Heavenly Mother was not a foreign concept to the early saints, to the to the original church before the split. So I've really kind of gone over everything that's in the article. You're welcome to read it for yourself. But I do want to end by reading the conclusion of the article, and that is the Divine Feminine, Heavenly Mother, is as real as the Divine Masculine, Heavenly Father. Regardless of one's view in deity, they are one, either literally or spiritually. So they are equal in purpose and power and in all things. Because when you're married, that's how it works. You're equals, you're partners. She is not hidden by the Father, as some might claim, nor is she a fragile thing in need of protection, as some mythologies claim. Rather, she is a living part of our worship and our lives, as we worship the Father through the Son, even Jesus Christ. We should remember her as we pray in Jesus' name. That's where I was in 2018 when I first wrote this article. And today, this is why I say Elohim should I. Because I want it, when I when I say my prayers, I want to acknowledge the Father and the Mother. I want to bear you my testimony of the reality of Heavenly Mother. She is real, and she loves us very much. She sent her Son, Jesus Christ, not to condemn the world, but to save us. Anything that you read in the scriptures where it talks about the Father doing something, I promise you, the Mother is doing it also. They truly are one in purpose and power. She does not have her own separate agenda. She is not out to do some evil, bad thing. And so, therefore, there is absolutely no reason to exclude her. And it is time, right now, to return back to this understanding. That's my message, and I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're now going to move into the Sacrament of Communion. First, our statement on Communion will be read, and then Christine is going to offer both sacrament prayers. Once both sacrament prayers have been said, have been read, you're welcome to pause the video to partake of the sacrament, sing a hymn, meditate on the atonement, and then when you're ready, please come back and join us for the conclusion of this video. At this time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to His mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ, as individuals and as a community, worshiping Jesus Christ through God's Word, the sacraments, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly.
O God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee, in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of Thy Son, and witness unto Thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of Thy Son, and always remember Him, and keep His commandments which He hath given them, that they may always have His Spirit to be with them. Amen. O God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee, in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do so in remembrance of the blood of Thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto Thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember Him, that they may have His Spirit to be with them. Amen. I want to thank you for taking the time to worship with us today. I want to thank you for coming back after sacrament. A lot of people don't. I can see the statistics and a lot of people listen to the message and then they're gone. So if you're still here with us, thank you. If you like this video, please actually like it on YouTube. Please like and follow the channel and please share this video on social media. We, we want people to know that they are loved. We want people to know the Heavenly Mother is real. We want people to know that they are accepted where they are by God and by us here in the fellowship. So let's get that message out so we can share the joy of the gospel with as many saints as possible. I'm now going to offer a closing prayer. Feel him should I, our Father who art in heaven and her mother who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We ask you to please bless us with all the things that we need, and we want you to know how thankful we are for all the things you have blessed us with. As we move forward in faith, we ask that you please bless all those that come to these services and partake of the sacraments with us, that partake of the Shema with us, and partake of the Holy Spirit with us. Please fill them with your divine light. Help them to know not only of your reality, but also of their self-worth, how much you love them how much you need them, and how much you're doing for them. Help them to understand your infinite faith in them and how much greater it can ever be than the faith that we as finite beings have in you. Please help us as we move forward that we will do so in ways that are pleasing unto thee. Please bless all the sisters that you have called to organize in your name and build up the sisterhood. Give them the courage to unite in your son, Jesus Christ, and do all these things that for too long men have held them back from, their rights, their priesthood. Please bless us as a fellowship. Help us to unite with one another in the name of your son. as a brotherhood, as a sisterhood, that we may create and build up the order of the ministry that you've asked us to do. Please bless those that you've called to help put together this church for the spiritually homeless, that they will begin moving things in the correct direction that's pleasing unto thee. And please bless those of us you've called in the, the Fellowship of Christ, the ecumenical movement, Help us with the School of the Prophets so that we can train up these people and help them prepare themselves better for the roles that you've asked them to be a part in. Please bless us with the, everything we stand in need of. Please send us those that we need 
whether they be in our personal lives, our professional lives, and our spiritual lives, as a part of any part of this journey that we are here wandering in upon the earth. Help us, give us the strength that we need to bless the lives of others, to help others in your name. These things we say and these things we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.